The Rockies will echo to a bone-rattling series of showdowns as Glory returns to the Mile High City. It's Glory 24, Denver. The middleweights dominate as the cream of the division go head-to-head -head in two epic battles, featuring three of the top four ranked fighters, plus tournament winner and local hero Dustin Jacoby. It's sure to be a night of knockouts. Rising star Jacoby will be looking to capitalize on his current streak and stop a motivated Wayne Barrett looking to reassert himself in the division. And in our Gold Rush main event, everyone's favorite bad boy, Joe Schilling, meets Jason Wilmes as both men stake a claim for a title shot against Artem Levin later this year. Plus, things are about to get heavy in the high plains as the big men bring the thunder in the heavyweight contender tournament. In this one night elimination event, four of the biggest men in glory will battle for the chance to unseat the crown prince of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven, later this year. Denver, Colorado, are you ready for glory? The Mile High City didn't disappoint as Glory 24 was filled with action, split decisions, impressive knockouts, and some unexpected surprises. So we start with the highlights in the Glory Super Fight Series as heavyweights Jason the Dragon Lee took on Steve Paprocki, followed by middleweights Chris Trammell and Zach King of War Wells. These fights all featured Americans making their glory debut. We got things off to a, well, a big bang, Stephen. Yeah, Jason Lee blasting those low kicks all night long, finished by that overhand right left hook. Man, that was a nasty combination. Lee took his time, set up his shots, picked his shots behind the ear, overhand right, finished things for that man there, Jason Dragon Lee. Chris Trammell versus Zach Wells up next. And look at that, a head kick on a jump roundhouse kick attempt. Both guys being very technical, but it was the length and the tenacity of Zach Wells landed over and over that right hand. Bingo, you're gone. Chris Trammell falls down to Zach Wells, that man there. Up next, it was the lightweights as undefeated at 10 and 0. 1 and 0 in glory, Kevin Van Nostren took on a newcomer, Justin Houghton, with only one professional fight under his belt and making his glory debut. Fight! The bell in round one scheduled for three three minute rounds. J Ho has been around the block. He actually worked for the railroad for four years, and that afforded him the opportunity to train all over the country. He's taking on the Southpaw Van Nostrand, who immediately comes out and immediately showcases a variety of strikes. Yeah, Van Nostrand is shooting high, shooting to the leg. Really gonna confuse Houghton. Houghton coming in rough though. Walks right into a uh, right hand. Van Nostrand, a third degree black belt in Kempo Karate, started kickboxing at 14. Van Nostrand offering so many different angles here, it's really confusing. Let's hope Houghton was good at geometry because he is being subjected to myriad angles by Van Nostrand in the opening minute of this fight, and Van Nostrand continues to come forward. There's a spinning back fist grazing the chin and Van Houten, or make that Houghton loading up with a right hand that just missed. A minute gone in the first. Man, Van Nostrand, a whirling dervish. He's got everything going on. He's got head movement, he's got spins, he's fighting switching stances, spinning moves. Yep, a volume striker, not putting much power into his flurries, but he likes to turn up the intensity and power. There's that straight left hand when he sees an opening. And he and saw one there. And Holding through a low kick at the same time, but it didn't matter because when you're standing on one leg, you're susceptible to getting hurt or knocked down. Action resumes. Outside low kick, and there, a high kick blocked by Houghton. Look at this, look at his stance. Look at Van Nostrand's stance. He's fighting like Don Wilson now, out of a side stance, throwing side kicks and coming in with a right hook. Again, a third degree black belt in Kempo Karate. There's a flying knee from Houghton that grazed the chest of Van Nostrand. Lunging, left hand by the southpaw. 
Again, just taking this fight on two weeks' notice here in high altitude. It doesn't seem to be affecting Van Nostrand thus far. No, I don't think so. I, plus, I think one of the reasons why he's changing his stance so much is just because he can. Mm. This, this opponent, Houghton, is not stopping him from doing any of these things. Houghton 31, Van Nostrand 28. Van Nostrand checked that low inside kick by Houghton. Sl slipped that right hand. Van Houghton taking his time now. There goes Van Nostrand. Faking the sidekick and coming in with a hook again. There's a short right hand by Houghton. Knee by Van Nostrand. Doesn't give Houghton much opportunity. And they're looking for the sweep. I love the double low sweep. If the guy checks too high to the front leg, he gets swept on the bottom leg. Final minute of the second. Good left hand through the guard by Van Nostrand body kick by Houghton. Houghton's got to throw more of those kicks. That was uh, off balance, and the hometown crowd still cheering on the fact that Van Nostrand was on his back momentarily. Van Nostrand's mouth is wide open right now, so I think this altitude is definitely having an effect on him. Well, he still is, is unbelievable in terms of his energy level, slipping the punches, coming forward. Under 30 seconds left in the second, Houghton slips and falls. Breakneck pace, though. Yes. Right. Behind the eight ball with a minute 20 left in the fight. It's been close in terms of the numbers, and yet, when you look at the visual, there, Van Nostrand needs a couple of right hands from Houghton. Van Nostrand looking to box right here. It's almost like he switched into a different fighting style completely. He turned pro in 2013 under the tutelage of his coach, Jim Andrello, in New York. His martial arts journey began at the age of eight when he found it difficult to focus on school. Didn't find it difficult to execute that straight left hand through the guard, however. Under a minute left in the fight. Sometimes he uses that straight hand like a, it's like a jab from behind here. He'll throw it one straight left, and then he'll throw another one right behind it like a double jab. Half a minute left in the bump. And I'm telling you, Van Oostrand is like a matrix level fighter. He's got so many different offbeat, crazy moves. There's a body kick from Houghton. The crowd here rallying behind the local favorite, Denver's J. Ho Houghton from the Grudge Training Center. Ten seconds remaining. Van Nostrand with a shimmy and a shake and a left hand through the guard. And we're headed to the judges' scorecards. What has been a great fight for Kevin Van Nostrand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the scores. Judge Martinez scores the bout 29 and 28. Hosted. Judge Ramirez scores the bout 30 27. Van Nostrand. And Judge Thrasher scores the bout 30 27 for your winner by split decision. Kevin Van Nostrand. What did I say about strange things happening? Hey, they got it right. Split decision for Kevin Van Nostrand, who improves to 11 and 0 and 2 and 0 here in glory. Still to come on Rewind. Three more middleweight bouts featuring five of the top 10 fighters in the division, including number two ranked Joe Schilling, taking on number three ranked Jason Wilness, with the winner getting a title shot against current middleweight champ Artem Levin. And a heavyweight contender tournament featuring four of the top 10 ranked fighters, with the winner one step closer to the title shot with Rico Verhoeven. November 6th, it's Glory 25 Monza. Lightweight legend Giorgio Petrosian returns to the ring on home soil, determined to claim a crucial comeback victory over his opponent, Josh Johnson. Johnson will be keen to claim the scalp of one of the all-time greats. Plus, the Glory Lightweight World title is on the line as Robin Van Roosbollen prepares to defend his title against Thai sensation Sitachai Sinsong Pinong. Glory 25 Monza, November 6th. We return to Glory 24 Denver with a battle of welterweights as number eight ranked Casey Green at two and two in glory takes on 10th ranked Francois Ombank, also sporting a glory record of two wins and two losses. Let's fight. 
They touch gloves, green in the white gloves, and bang in the black. Round one underway. Green uh, mostly trains at Sake Son Muay Thai Academy in Los Angeles, and he's been working with Carlo Deckers, the brother of the late, great Muay Thai icon Ramon Deckers. Both men coming out patient. Gunslinger stances, hands high. And bang, blasting away with a nice punch combination, finished with a left hook to the ribs. And there's a beautiful Dutch style combination. Body work followed by the outside low kick by Ambang, who, following his big win over Stephen Richards, got to go on a roller coaster for the first time with his family. Beautiful keep him up, keep right him up. from Green. And it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride thus far for Ambang during his glory tenure. Same can be said for Green, who, at the beginning of the year, started Project WIT, which is an acronym for whatever it takes, and by modern standards has been busy. This is his fourth kickboxing fight of the year. Two and two thus far in his glory tenure. Right now, Ambain coming in with lead uppercuts and things like this, which ordinarily would be susceptible to being countered, but Green has it. There's a outside low kick that buckled the knee of Casey Green fighting out of the southpaw stance. He likes to be a switcher, naturally right-handed, but likes to play with Southpaw. There's that left kick that was blocked. Another kick blocked by Ambang. I'm a little shocked at how oh, nice. patient oh, right. Right. Casey Green is in this fight because he's eating a lot of shots. And a right hand, and the kick blocked by Ambang. More methodical approach by Casey Green. Switching stances. Fuck. Fuck. This kind of fight so far is definitely favoring Francois Ambang. Ambang frustrated with his glory tenure, saying that he won the Road to Glory tournament and still finds himself here on the Glory Super Fight Series, break, break, hoping break, to make break. it to the main break, card. Break, break, and that wider break. exposure eventually, of course, an impressive victory tonight would certainly help his cause. Yes, it would. Good counter there by Ambang on that bull rush of Casey Green. 30 seconds remaining. Counter right hand bounced off the shoulder though for Green. Misses with that sweeping right hand, that left hook. So I like the rope up there yeah. by Ambang. Ambang showing off some defense as well. Very nice. That punch circling back to the center of the ring with 15 seconds left in the opening round. Nice inside low kick by Ambang and then goes upstairs with some punches and an uppercut. Seconds, nice start Listen for Francois. Bang, bang, Ambang. In Green's corner saying that Ambang is hesitating. They want him to pick up the pace and he comes up more aggressively. Chucking the leather in his white gloves, and bang in the black, so a quick flurry of punches and exchange to begin the second stanza. And bang is not only making Casey Green pay with low kicks, he's also making him pay by punching him to the body. There's a left body kick by Green. And bang responds with an inside low kick, then the tie plum knee and the counter punch from Green. Now Green doing the good, the right thing, moving in. He's got to start blasting. He's got to, got to turn this into a bit of a brawl. And bang with 50% connect rate. Anytime you're near 50%, your total strikes landed. You, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, pretty well indeed. Got eight more landed than Green did in their the first round. One minute gone here in the middle frame. And bang, slipping the punch, counters with a right hand through the guard, inside low kick, finds himself. Oh, 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 that shot buckled and bang! Left uppercut, Green now needs a right cross. Green teeing up and bang on the ropes, another knee to the head, right cross, and bang taking these shots and going down. It all started with that right knee for Casey Green. That did major damage. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. He's waved off the fight. Casey Go Green in his welterweight debut stops Francois Bang Bang and Bang in the second round. An impressive win by Green as he bounces back after a tough loss to Dustin Jacoby at Glory 23 Las Vegas.
Our Super Fight Series at Glory 24 concluded with number eight ranked Canadian Robert the White Dragon Thomas taking on David the Machine Ratuff in middleweight action. Fight! The bell and round one scheduled for three three minute rounds of the Glory middleweight division. Thomas in the white gloves, Ratuff in the black. You mentioned that Thomas wanted to get off to a faster start. He admitted he can be overly calm. Wanted to. Oh, there's a body kick from Ratif, and that was like a gunshot echoing throughout the confines of the Magnus Arena. And he set it up perfectly with those two punches. Yeah, of course, Thomas talking about his background as a Muay Thai fighter. And, and Stephen, as you well know, the, in Muay Thai, it takes a round or two to begin to, to, to fight. <laughs> they do that for betting reasons. Right, though. right. Back to back. Because Fight. knockouts are discouraged in Muay Thai. Right. Well, not from where I'm sitting, but I agree with you. I know what you're saying in the traditional sense. Oh, in, in Thailand. Right. Yes, yes, about. of course. Fight. But everyone loves a knockout. Yeah, but they, they like to bet. But uh, Tom is stalking oh. Radif here. Yeah, and he nails him with the body kick. And you can Ready? catch the kick, but you have to deliver a, a strike immediately. That's what Radif did. So a good start here between Radif and Thomas. A couple of hard hitters in the middle middleweight division. Radif has got such a strange rhythm to his fighting. Right. He, he almost got around and, and got Box. ready for a hip toss. Yeah, and really, if you look at previous fight footage of Radif, he's, he's relentless, to say the least. Interesting that Thomas is basically walking Radif down, but he refuses to throw the jab. Oh, nice right hand, though, and a knee, and another knee from Thomas. Has Radif in the corner. Radif fights his way out in the final 45 seconds of the opening round. And Radif with a good little combination in there. Close. Right in that clinch. 30 seconds left in the opening round. Both have had their opportunities. Nice right hand through the guard by Radif. Left hook to the body by Thomas. Misses with that right uppercut. But he landed that kind of right hook from, from Orthodox. Knee and left hook lands for Thomas. Oh, he had the body. There's a right uppercut. And now Thomas beginning to find his rhythm with 10 seconds left in the round. Radif with the kick out of the corner. Begin round number two. Spinning hook kick attempt by Radif in the black gloves. Robert Thomas in the white gloves. Almost hit, almost clashed heads there. Yeah. All right. So getting a little dirty here on the inside, right. a little chippy. Fight. Radif was about to spin and he caught right. a left hook. Thomas with the edge in total strikes. Both of them landing well, though. Near 50% each. Thomas beginning to find his rhythm. As Radif in the corner again allows him to come out, though. Misses with the right uppercut, catches the kick, and that one was under the armpit. Radif is like a little Wolverine. He would wait on the ropes, then he would try to thorn his way out. And he lands a couple of nice right hands. Counter left hook to the jaw by Thomas. Outside low kick by Radif, knee up the middle by Thomas, backs Radif again into the corner. That doesn't take advantage of it. The thing that puzzles me is that I don't think uh, Robert Thomas has thrown a single jab in this whole fight. And that would seem to be the weapon that would set up the right hand and the right low kick. Sets everything up and you're right, he's going for broke here. Yeah. He's... Mixing up the power shots and the knees and the kicks. Yeah, he's, he's leading with a power shot. Right. So in the final stages of the second round, Thomas beginning to assert himself with the knees from the tie plum. What would you like to see Radif do here? Fight. As we look at strikes landed pretty close, but still in favor of Thomas. Radif, uh, according to your unofficial scorecard, Stephen needs a stoppage. Anything you'd like to see him do differently? I'd like to see him Fight in there, fight. throw more overhand punches and be first. Because right now he's waiting for in the Thomas to be first, and that's why he's losing. There it is, the jab. But behind the jab, you gotta throw something like a right hand or a oh. kick. Left hook on the break by Thomas, and he continues to just pepper away. Radif coming back, but breathing, taking those deep breaths here in the high altitude, and the sweep knocks Radif to the canvas, will not here. be ruled a knockdown, Ready. however. That was beautiful, Fight. because he didn't even have to catch the leg to do that. Left hook to the body by Thomas, changing levels. Fight. 
See, this is the kind of fight Radov needs, but he needs to throw more punches because Thomas is the busier fighter right. here Jumping when they're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. From White Dragon, there's a spinning back kick right to the, uh, attempted to deliver by Radov. A minute and a half left in the fight. The back kick is a good strategy for Radov because that is a game changer. You can really fight, hurt somebody fight. with a back kick. Problem is, you need right. a lot of right, gas right, right, in your tank, and I fight. think that Radov is fading here. And Robert Thomas, much faster, busy, and Radov now coming forward. So they've been going back and forth, throwing a lot of strikes. This is the, the best round. Matchup. This is the best round of the fight because they're both fighting back so hard. So a great finish to a great middleweight matchup between Robert Thomas and glory newcomer David Radov. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are the scores. Judge Ramirez scores the bout 29-28, Radoff. Judge Thrasher, 30-27, Thomas. And Judge Johnson, 30-27 for your winner by split decision, Robert Thomas! With the victory, Thomas is sure to move up in the middleweight rankings. How high will be determined later on after our two upcoming headline bouts of the night, which feature four of the top 10 ranked middleweights going head to head. But up next, it's the always exciting, always entertaining, and always surprising one night tournament. Glory 24 Denver featured the heavyweights. Up next on Rewind. November 6th, it's Glory 25 Monza. Lightweight legend Giorgio Petrosian returns to the ring on home soil, determined to claim a crucial comeback victory over his opponent, Josh Johnson. Johnson will be keen to claim the scalp of one of the all-time greats. Plus, the Glory Lightweight World title is on the line as Robin Van Roosbollen prepares to defend his title against Thai sensation Sitachai Sinsong Pinong. Glory 25 Monza, November 6th. Are you ready for glory? The heavyweights took part in the contender tournament in Denver with the winner getting a title shot against current champ Rico Verhoeven at Glory 26 Amsterdam this December. In the first semifinal, ranked sixth, the Netherlands Jafar Wilnes with an overall record of 27-5-1, 3-1 in glory took on number eight ranked Australian Ben Edwards with an overall record of 36, 10, and three, one and one in his glory career. Fight! The bell in round one. Jafar Wilness in the white gloves, banging Ben Edwards in the black gloves. And Edwards already walking down Wilness to the ropes. Wilness circling out though. Wilness almost in the corner though. Edwards began his kickboxing journey in 2003, attacking the body with the right hand. There's a tie plumb by Wilnes, but he gets caught with another right, so an aggressive start by Bang and Ben Edwards. 32 of his 36 wins have come inside the distance. He is one and one in glory with that knockout victory over Jamal Ben Sadiq at Glory 12 in New York in November of 2013. Meanwhile, Wilnes, 27, five and one, just seven KOs, but he's three and one in glory with two wins inside the distance. And again, a quick start, especially here in the high altitude for these heavyweights, knowing they have to win two fights in one night in order to challenge Rico Verhoeven. Wilnes, in fact, has been the main sparring partner for Verhoeven. They've been sparring three times a week, 10 three minute rounds per session. But they know it's business if Wilness wins the tournament, Stephen. Oh, yeah. Back at the Magnus Arena in Denver for round two. How'd you score round one on your unofficial scorecard fight, Professor? I would have to give that round 10-9 to Jafar Wilness. He did the more effective work, especially near the end of the run. And now he's got Ben Edwards' uh, left leg hurt with that low kick. And Edwards shelling up. Kick from Wilness that was partially blocked, but Jafar Wilness composed. And yet, uber aggressive, uh -oh. working the body of Ben Edwards, has him on the ropes. It's almost over. Figuratively and literally. 30 seconds gone in the second round, and you know Wilnes will try to vanquish Edwards as quickly as possible, knowing he has yet another fight tonight. But Edwards there showing is. his medal, and there was a shot. Big advantage for Wilnes in strikes landed, and now Edwards standing stationary. And another kick. Wilnes chopping away at Edwards. He goes down. That's it. And this could be for the count. That's it. He's not going to get back up. Four. Five. 
five, six. Do not count out seven. Ben Edwards. He look got me, back up. Me. You want to fight? You go, Amazing okay, heart okay. for Ben right, Edwards, knowing fight. what is at stake. Minute 45 left in the second round, but Edwards needs to fight back, and Willness not allowing him to do so. And it's just really a matter of time. Brutal. That low kick is just brutal. Chopping Edwards down. Do not go. Like and there he goes again. That's it. In the tournament, two knockdowns in a round constitutes a TKO. Hello, Jafar Wilness. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our referee Tim Mills calls a halt to this contest at 1 minute 30 seconds of that second round, declaring the winner by knockout, who now advances to the tournament final, Jafar Wilness. So Jafar Wilness takes out Ben Edwards and now waits for the winner of semifinal number two and stands one victory away from the title shot against Rico Verhoeven. Our second semifinal features number one ranked Romania's Benjamin Adekbui with an impressive overall record of 20 and three, three and one in glory, taking on the Scorpion Sting from Croatia. Ranked at number five, Mladen Brestovac looking for his 50th overall professional win and second with glory. Hey, Bell and round one, they touch gloves in the rematch. Restovac in the black gloves, and Igbui in the white gloves. The last time Glory was in Denver at Glory 16 in May of last year, and Igbui knocked out Daniel Sam. And Restovac already coming out kicking, whether it be to the ribs or to the arms of Adekbui. Both can be effective. A southpaw from Croatia with a devastating left head kick. Um, let me see. Sounds Reminds familiar, me right? of someone. Can't quite put my... Oh, yeah. The guy who punked me. Mirko Prokop. And in fact, oh, Restovac has sparred with the Croatian legend Prokop. Adek Bui walking Restovac down, put him up in the corner. Adek Bui has... Hired a new strength and conditioning coach, specializing in posture, staying balanced. He says he's stronger than he was against Verhoeven. Right body kick to the southpaw, Restovac. Restovac has got a specific game plan to not throw any punches at all. And there he proves me wrong. But it's all about the kicks for Restovac. Yeah, he likes to throw heavier kicks to set up his combinations. Loves those heavy body kicks and head kicks. I think Bowie landed two really decent low kicks himself. And Brestovac made a big debut for Glory when he took out none other than Jafar Wilness at Glory 14 in his hometown of Zagreb. He would like to set up a rematch with Wilness in the final, but first he'd like to avenge a previous loss to Adek Bowie here in this semifinal matchup. Right now, low kicks are being very effective for Adek Bowie as well to set up his punch combinations. And if Bowie has spent time training with UFC light heavyweight Alexander Gustafsson. Gustafsson, maybe the most talented light heavyweight in MMA without a belt, losing to Daniel Cormier in another spirited affair recently. And if Bowie, though, versatile in his attack on Brestovac. A lot of damage to both men's legs here in a chop -a thon so far, and that's going to be a problem. Whoever makes it to the final. They exchange low kicks. 10 seconds, listen for the bell, listen for the bell. Attic Bowie with a right uppercut on the inside. Attic Bowie continuing to unload on Brestovac as we head to round two. And quickly on your unofficial scorecard, who won that opening round? I gave the opening round to Benjamin Attic Bowie because he outboxed uh, Brestovac. They both were throwing low kicks. Brestovac got the better of the kicks in the exchanges, but I think that Attic Bowie did the better work with his hands. Restovac nicknamed the Scorpion Sting because he's a Scorpio and his left kick, well, stings. And it's Adek Bowie though, putting the leather on Restovac at close quarters. These two heavyweights continue to battle in the high altitude of Denver. Both kicks blocked. Restovac checked that low kick. But Adek Bowie putting together the better punching combinations, doing a better job of making that investment to the body. He really is. One thing I noticed about Adek Bowie is that Restovac will throw maybe a high kick, then Adek Bowie will throw a high kick also to show him, hey, I can do that too. And Adek Bowie 
with the advantage in terms of punches. Vestalbach with the advantage in terms of kicks, and you can see how close it is when it comes to the striking numbers. Just a barometer of how things are going in this heavyweight tilt. But here we have Vestalbach with his back to the ropes again, eating a couple of low kicks, and Adegui basically forcing the action. And Adegui, low kick, left hand, Vestalbach backs up into the corner. Adegui pine with the jab. Outside low kick, Vestalbach oh, finally oh, touches oh, the oh, canvas oh, with his glove. Three, he goes down. Four, five, that was nasty. Six, seven, eight, nine. You want to keep going, you okay? Put your gloves up. Walk to me. Walk to me. Ready? Fight. Tom Johnson allows Vestalbach to continue, but for how much longer? Another knockdown in the round, and the fight will be over. Right head kick blocked by Vestalbach. You cannot question the heart and guts of any fighter on the Glory roster. Brestovac desperately trying to fight back, but that lead leg, that leg is in pain. He's doubled over. This fight is over. It'll be Benjamin Adegbui battling Jafar Wilness for the right to challenge Glory heavyweight champion Rico Verhoeven. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee Tom Johnson steps in and waves off this contest at 1 minute 47 seconds of that third and final round, declaring your winner by technical knockout, who now advances to the tournament final, Benjamin Adegbui! So now Benjamin Adegbui takes on Jafar Wellness in the finals of the heavyweight contender tournament. The winner, earning a title shot with Rico Verhoeven at Glory 26 Amsterdam on December 4th. Bell and round one, Wilness in the white gloves, and a buoy in the black. Wilness starting right off with the left jab, which I would have thought Adegbui would have done. Body kick by Adegbui, both of them trying to use the jab. High guard by Adek Bowie blocking the jab from Wilness. There was a shotgun left kick to the body. And of course, usually it's the ones that don't make that loud noise that hurt more, Stephen. You know, that's funny how that works. It's all, you know, it's good. Sounds visceral good experience, yeah. It's good for the, for the crowd. Sure. But then again, a shot like that, I still think you feel it. As they do, oh, nice combination exchange in that left hand of the body by Wilness. It's about the hooks for Wilness right now. Rico Verhoeven scheduled to defend the championship in Amsterdam. And boy, are the Dutch happy to welcome Glory back to the Netherlands at the end of the year. Oh, nice knee up the middle by Eddie Bowie, but Wilness absorbed it and said, all right, no big deal. Adek Boy with a really good left hook to the liver. And a left kick. Oh, oh man, working that liver, making it quiver is Adek Bowie. But Wilness continues to walk forward, whether, he, unless he has a great poker face, he's taking these shots well. Good right hand by Boot Wilness. Wilness landing again with that right hand. And Wilness all over Adek Bowie. Start to this heavyweight contender tournament final here at Glory 24. When they continue the pace they established in round one, they touch gloves and immediately start firing. Adam Bowie in the black gloves, will this in the white, and dare I say they're off to an even quicker start. Man, what is up? It's like Jafar is going for the knockout here. And he really put it on Attic Bowie in the latter stages of the opening round with those punches. They exchanged the low kicks, but now there's a nice overhand right that lands for Wilmus. I think that Wilmus' corner wasn't too happy about the way things played out in that first round. They really pumped him up there in the corner in between rounds. Well, I think they should be pretty happy with what transpired as we take a look at the total strikes. Big advantage for Wilmus. Yeah. Attic Bowie with the liver kick. Knee to the body by Wilness. Toe to toe, mano a mano. This is what Glory Heavyweight action is all about. How important is a shot at the Glory Heavyweight Championship? They're 
throwing everything at each other. One minute remaining in the second round. A paintbrush left hook, another paintbrush left hook by Wilmers. You, you mentioned it, Stephen, about all the heavyweights not having a lot of time to get acclimated to the high altitude here. Yeah. Right uppercut, left hook, nice combination from Attic Bowie. So they both began on that same level playing field, as right. it were. That's the thing, because if somebody got here early and rested up, we saw that happen with uh, Fabrizio Verdum against Cain Velasquez in Mexico. Good combination by Attic Bowie, but Wellness fires back. And they're throwing more strikes than you will see in the Major League Baseball playoffs that are underway. Ten seconds left in the second round. And Wilness and Attic Bowie continue to take each other apart here with the final round straight ahead. High altitude, we don't care about any stinking high altitude. Wilness and Attic Bowie embrace. They know they put on a show thus far. What do they have in store for this, the third and final round, with a shot at the glory heavyweight crown up for grabs? I want to say Wilness appears to be the, sh the sharper fighter right now, but then Attic Bowie will fire back like Rico that. Rico Verhoeven, who of course has sparred extensively with Jafar Wilness, may be saying to himself, wait a minute, I may have created a monster here. Yeah, Wilness is definitely jumping knee by Wilness. He's winning the total strike game already. Adek Bowie, his corner didn't seem too happy about it. Adek Bowie fading ever so slightly here against the ropes. It's Wilness that's putting together the punches. Right uppercut, the left hook, as I say that by Adek Bowie. It's incredible. It's just the punch output is unbelievable for a heavyweight fight. I mean, period. The fact that it's at high altitude makes it that much more impressive. A much different Jafar Wilness in his return to the glory ring. Riding a five-fight win streak, winning a tournament in China. Now hoping to win this tournament and earn a right to challenge his sparring partner, Rico Verhoeven. Less than a minute remaining, Adam Bowie's second shot at a championship. Seems to be ticking away here with 45 seconds left. It really does because right now he's being second, not first. Seconds left. This is all Wilmers here. Left hook upstairs by Wilmers. Attic Bowie on the ropes, misses with the right hand. Punches in bunches. Cavalcade of kicks. Heavyweights throwing down in the Mile High City of Denver. The crowd here at Magnus Arena cheering on Attic Bowie and Wilmers. What a All right, ladies and gentlemen, after three grueling tournament rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Judge Oscar Martinez scores the bout 29-28, Adek Bowie. Judge Tom Johnson scores the bout 29-28, Wilness. And Judge Ben Ramirez scores the bout 29-28 for your winner by split decision. And now, glory contender tournament champion, Benjamin Adek Bowie! So by the narrowest of margins, Benjamin Adek Bowie has earned a title shot at the Glory season-ending event in Amsterdam at Glory 26 on December 4th. Up next, it's time for our co-headline and headline bouts of the evening, featuring four of the top 10 ranked middleweights when we continue with Glory 24 Rewind from Denver, Colorado. November 6th, it's Glory 25 Monza. Lightweight legend Giorgio Petrosian returns to the ring on home soil, determined to claim a crucial comeback victory over his opponent, Josh Johnson. Johnson will be keen to claim the scalp of one of the all-time greats. 
Plus, the glory lightweight world title is on the line as Robin Van Roosbollen prepares to defend his title against Thai sensation Sitachai Sinsong Pinong. Glory 25 Monza, November 6th. Are you ready for glory? Welcome back to Denver's Side of Glory 24. Our co-headline event features number four ranked Wayne Barrett against number 10 ranked Dustin Jacoby. Wayne Barrett enters tonight with a four and three record in glory, looking to avenge a loss to number one ranked middleweight Simon Marcus at Glory 20 Dubai. Dustin Jacoby, on the other hand, comes in riding a two-fight winning streak with knockouts of Ariel Sepulveda and Casey Green in the middleweight qualifying tournament at Glory 23 in Las Vegas this past August. Hey! The bell in round one as they touch gloves. Barrett in the white gloves. Jacoby in the black. Jacoby coming off the victory in the middleweight qualification tournament at Glory 23 in Las Vegas, feeling higher than you're, well, allowed to get in his home state while Wayne Barrett, out of Jamaica, should have come to the ring with Bob Marley's redemption song because he's in the midst of a three-fight losing streak and he is all about redemption tonight. I guess so. Inside low kick by Barrett. Jacoby from the southpaw stands back to orthodox. Jacoby doing the right thing by pressing Barrett. And Jacoby goes down like a turkey attempting to fly in this Canadian Thanksgiving Day weekend, Mike. And a big shout out to all those you watching in the True North Strong and Free. Barrett allowing Jacoby to move forward without any counters yet. First minute is gone. Inside low kick by Barrett, now fighting from Southpaw as well. Switches back to Orthodox, so both of them trying to befuddle the other in the early stages of this middleweight matchup. See, Barrett can be so dangerous and so explosive from just throwing a wild outside lead left hook or lead overhand right. So just because he's up against the ropes, don't think he can't do damage. Jacoby in the black gloves, Barrett in the white gloves. They exchange jabs. Outside low kick by Barrett as he's backed up to the ropes. It's almost like Barrett is sparring here. Switches back to Southpaw. Jacoby looking for that highlight real finish in front of the partisan crowd. Yeah, Jacoby's got really tight defense against punches. Got the elbows in, hands up, chin down. Fight! Fight! Jacoby training at Factory X Muay Thai alongside Chris Camozzi, a former UFC opponent turned friend. His head coach is Mark Montoya. Meanwhile, Barrett out of New York representing Team Barrett. His coach is Jason Strout. Barrett currently ranked number four. Jacoby ranked number 10 in the glory middleweight division. So far, Jacoby treating Barrett like fashion critics have been treating Kanye West as we head to the final 20 seconds of the second round. And Jacoby physically manhandling Wayne Barrett. Barrett got nothing on his punches right and now. And no offense, nothing in, in terms of volume either. As it's all Dustin Jacoby Great. heading Great. to the Great. third Great. and final round here in Denver, Colorado. Great. Jacoby in control according to our unofficial scorecards. But again, it's up to the three judges seated at ringside chosen by the Colorado State Boxing Commission to determine a victory. If it goes the distance, but Jacoby trying to put on a show here in front of family and friends. Jacoby just blasting through anything that Barrett throws. Imposing his will, 100%. And yet, total strikes. Yeah, it was closer than we thought, but I gotta say that the power strikes are definitely Jacoby's. Yeah, and you can see the tenor of the fight. Again, we just try to tell the story as it unfolds, and I mean, look at the action here. Barrett, he's almost too calm, too collected, especially now. With one minute gone in the third and final round, Jacoby with the aggression. And again, if you're new to glory, the scoring criteria, it actually begins with the cumulative knockdown. So the amount of knockdowns, cumulative damage, spectacular techniques, so on and so forth down the line. So really, it is about aggression. It's about knocking your opponent down. We haven't seen what? On cue! On cue! Wow. Man. This is 
This is a great night for Jacoby and a bad Seven. night for Barrett. Can Eight. I say it one more time? No. On cue. And it's over. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an official time of one minute, 40 seconds of that third and final round. This one comes to an end by technical knockout. For your winner, Dustin Jacoby. So hometown favorite Dustin Jacoby runs his winning streak to three and moves up in the middleweight rankings to number five. Our headline event of the night features the top ranked middleweights with the winner earning a shot at middleweight title holder, Artem Levin. Number two ranked Joe Schilling comes into this fight with a 19 and six overall record, five and two in glory. His opponent, number three ranked Jason Wilness, enters with a 25, five and one overall record and only three and three in glory. Judge, 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 fighter, fighter. Fight. Bell in round one, social media still buzzing with what many are calling the fight of the year, the fight we just witnessed in the heavyweight contender tournament final. Schilling and Wilness will try to do their best to better that and a quick start here. Schilling in the white gloves, Wilness in the black gloves. Last time Schilling was in the glory ring was back in February at Glory 19 when he defeated Robert Thomas. Wilness coming off a loss to Simon Marcus, who of course is also in the title mix, but Schilling walking him down, delivering a couple of knees. Left kick and a fast start for Schilling. Oh yeah, Schilling's all over Willis right now. Willis firing back with that one roundhouse kick, but oh, right cross by Willis. They're throwing bombs here. So they're saying, hey, heavyweights, we can do that too. Great night of action here in Denver, Colorado. Pick up those kicks. And we appreciate your comments at hashtag Glory24 as they are just literally throwing bombs at each other. Schilling really trying to tee off on Wallace. Wallace got a really tight guard, but some of those punches for Schilling are slipping in. Yeah, he has that high tight guard that will maybe give him a Schilling an opportunity to attack the body. Yeah. Instead, he looks for the jab, fakes the kick. Schilling really wisely using that right front kick. Right now, Schilling got his hands down when he's out of range, and Willis can't capitalize because he can't get in quick enough to drop a bomb. Willness is 6-1, Schilling is 6-3, and there's a knee from the clinch by Schilling. 30 seconds left in the first round, and Schilling just putting the pressure on Willness. Schilling really doing a job of out kickboxing Jason Willness at this particular point. The bell in round number two. Inside low kick by Willis again shelling up with that high guard, but Schilling kicking him. Those punches blocked the front kick. Schilling in the white gloves, Willis in the black. Willis unable to just get set up because of the onslaught of Joe Schilling. Jump stair climb left knee and spinning by Schilling. The just missed by Schilling. Schilling all about the front kick. Right front kick. Cut kick down low to the knee. Those punches were blocked. Inside low kick by Willis. We would love to establish that. Yeah, Schilling and Southpaw right now. And the strikes landed. 26-18 total. More kicks for Willis as expected, although Schilling using the kick a lot, but Schilling busier in the punching department. Oh! And now that is gonna be ruled. A yeah, knockdown with a straight knockout. left hand. I wanted to wait because I've, I've... Six, seven, eight. Man, what a shot. Yeah, that was a good shot. So, Willis threw a kick and he got caught with a punch. Nice counter left hand by Schilling, drawing the first knockdown. Three knockdowns in a round, four total in a fight, leads to a TKO victory. Man, that left kick is snapping the arm of Jason Willis. And a focused and motivated Joe Schilling working here midway through the round and the fight. Schilling off his, or Willis off his back foot, now trying to walk forward, trying to cut off the ring. Inside low kick by Schilling. Outside low kick by Willis. Schilling from Southpaw putting together punches. A lot of them blocked though with the high guard. Time! That was on the way. He's standing like this. Schilling pleading his case. He's standing like this. Fight! Really 
tucks gloves in, they start blasting right away. Man, look at him, they're swinging wild here. Oh, oh, and Will that's coming back. Will is caught right, in a right, beautiful right, right hand. Lean break, lean break, lean break. Fight. Oh, and Will this. Oh, they're shilling. The Rob's holding him up. Will this now on the attack. What a round here in round number two. The psycho has arrived. Those hurt shilling. And he ducks right, under the right, right hand. Now he's going to clinch right. like the veteran, wanting to earn a few seconds of respite. He got clocked with that right hand, but was still standing after knocking Willness down earlier in the round. Willis can't let, let him back in here. He's got to basically get on him. 15 seconds left. A terrific main event between Willness and Schilling. Both had their moments. Schilling recorded the knockdown. And there's Glory Girl Alyssa letting us know that it's the third and final round. What a round we just saw in number two. Wait a minute. The referee is waving off the fight. There appears to have been, who I'm being told by the Wilness corner, that Wilness has suffered an injury to his foot, perhaps his ankle. Darn it all. Wow. Of what could have been an amazing third round, but Joe Schilling oh. returns to glory. Victorious, perhaps a little anticlimactic, and you got a feel for the Wilness brothers tonight. Look at the swelling right there. Great job by the glory camera as that foot is blown up. <laughs> With his opponent unable to answer the bell for the third round, we have an official time of three minutes of the second round. Your winner by technical knockout, Joe Stitch Him Up Schilling. A surprising end to a great night of action as Jason Wilness is unable to answer the call in round three. As it appears, he has broken toes on his right foot when he attempted a front kick that was blocked by the right knee of Joe Schilling. That will do it from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado and Glory 24. Up next, it's Milan, Italy and Glory 25 coming your way on November 6th.